Hello. Over the years, I have uh, been building and designing and working on various circuits and devices, and I've come up with uh, an array of tools and techniques, uh, tricks and tips that uh, I've kind of settled on some things that I use every day. And what I'd like to do with this uh, video and the next couple videos is show you some of those uh, tools and tricks and tips and techniques. Uh, first of all, I'd like to look at screwdrivers. This is a, uh, a battery charger for a cell phone, and Frequently I need to get inside of something like this to uh, maybe make a modification or add some wiring to it. And this one happens to have three Phillips head screws. And I'll typically grab a screwdriver with the proper Phillips bit in it and unscrew those, uh, do what I need to do and then screw them back in. Now this particular uh, battery charger is not too bad. I probably have to turn that eight or ten times to get a uh, screw out of there. But I'm always on the lookout for things that make uh, such a project, such a uh, task, a little bit more convenient. And this is one that I found recently. This is called a wow stick. It's an electric screwdriver. It's got a forward button, a reverse button. It's got some LEDs, and it's got interchangeable uh, bits. I happen to have a Phillips in there, so if I want to take one of these screws out, I simply put it in there, hit the button for reverse, if I want to put it back, hit the button for forward, and I'm done. The thing that's really nice about this, first of all, the price isn't too bad. In the neighborhood of twenty to thirty dollars, you can sometimes find it a little bit less. I got this one for about seventeen on Amazon at Christmas time, but it comes in this really attractive case, which makes it ideal for gifts. Uh, the screwdrivers in here, but the remarkable thing is it comes with eighteen bits, uh, Phillips bits, flat blade bits. Uh, Torx, security bits, uh, you name it, you've probably got a bit in here that will take care of that uh, task, whether you're trying to take apart a cell phone or a laptop or something like that. Now, I really like the wow stick, but I was really wowed by the second screwdriver. This is an ES120, and you can see by looking at the two of them, it's quite nicely finished. This is all machined steel. And the thing that's remarkable, it's got a display. If I hit this little button here, you can see it's showing me the state of charge of the battery. This one is rechargeable. It shows me which direction the, the uh, bit is turning. Well, why would you need to know that? Well, this is, uh, this is quite amazing. Let me take a clamp and put it on the bit so that you can see clearly that it's turning. Let me get that on there. It doesn't want to clamp on for me. Come on. Let's do it this way. Okay, if I push the button right below the display, nothing happens, but if I turn my hand a little bit to the right, you'll see it starts turning to the right. And if I turn my hand a little bit to the left, it goes to the left. And you'll notice the further I turn it, the faster it goes. So this one has an accelerometer in it that senses your movement and turns the bit in the direction that you're turning your wrist. If I take that same battery charger, uh, put the Phillips bit in there, and that's out. If I want to put it back in, just turn it to the right, and that finishes up. Truly beautiful uh, piece of work. Uh, the bad news is it's expensive. This ES120 is in the neighborhood of $90 to $100, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little bit less. But if you're looking for a real uh, precision, beautiful piece of machinery, um, you could do a lot worse than this. Speaking of screwdrivers, if you're more interested in bits than in electricity to run them, this is a set of 56 different bits. Uh, some Phillips, some Torx, some flat blade, some hex. I can't imagine there's too many uh, security screws that wouldn't be serviced by one of these. It also has a set of uh, little sockets, little metric sockets that you can use for taking bolts out. The thing that's nice about this, the bits in this set are interchangeable with the bits for the WOW stick and with the bits for the ES120. So if you have a lot of different types of screws that you have to deal with, uh, this is a really nice uh, setup in order to get into those uh, devices, again, whether they be cell phones, laptops, or what have you. You may be wondering why I'm starting out with a bunch of smoke in the background. Uh, this is uh, 
the subject of another video that I did oh, a year or so ago on how to make a uh, smoke generator out of an e-cigarette. You disconnect these. The reason I have these running is I ran into a problem while I was trying to develop uh, the smoke chambers. I'm using pill bottles uh, to accept the heating element from an e-cigarette. And the problem I was running into is I needed the threads in the bottom of that heating element to fit into a hole in the bottom of the pill bottle. And I could not find a, a, a bit, a drill bit, that was the right diameter. I could find one that was a little bit too small or a little bit too big, but just was unable to find the exact one I needed. And that's when I came across this little device. This is called a reamer. And this one's beautiful. It's even got a little lid. Not a bad idea because this is extremely sharp. This is a tapered cutting device. And what I was able to do was to drill a hole a little bit smaller than what I needed and then turn this reamer in that hole very delicately until it just fit the threads of that heating element and it was the trick that allowed me to get this to work well. So there's two reamers that I work with. This one is a 14 millimeter which means the diameter where it's at, at its thickest is 14 millimeters. It tapers down to just about zero. It's quite sharp on the end of it. You can use this to ream obviously pill bottles which I used. I also use them on plexiglass. Here I've got a little piece of plex. You can use them on wood. You can use them on cardboard. You could use them on thin metal, I would think, something like brass. I don't think you'd want to use it on steel because this is probably not the, uh, the hardest steel in the world. This one is for really delicate um, operations. We're only taking a little bit. If you want to be a little bit more aggressive, there's another uh, reamer that I can use to... Uh, really dig in and turn on this plexiglass. It goes much faster than the other one. And neither of these is particularly expensive. Uh, Five to ten dollars I would think. I'll, I'll put a link on the uh, on the video where, as to where I got them. But if you ever need to make a hole just a little bit bigger than what your drill bit is going to do, especially if you need it to be slightly tapered so it'll take some thin threads, uh, these reamers are really not a bad choice. Quite frequently when I'm working uh, at my bench, I'll need to cut something, whether that be a bolt that's a little bit too long, a piece of brass tubing, a piece of stainless steel piano wire, uh, plexiglass, sometimes circuit board. I need to modify the shape or size of a circuit board a little bit or smooth it over. And the tool that I frequently will reach for is a Dremel. I've got a couple of them that I keep near my workbench. And the cutoff wheel that I have in here is really ideal. Uh, for the jobs that I just mentioned. It's a uh, resin and reinforced fiber and I find that it cuts through darn near anything. It will certainly cut through all the things I just mentioned along with wood, uh, different types of plastic. Uh, it'll even scratch uh, and, and sometimes cut ceramic and glass depending upon what you're working with. Let's say I wanted to take this bolt and shorten it a bit what I'd like to do first of all is to wind a nut onto it. That's always a good idea. It gives you an opportunity to wind it back out when you're done and clean the thread to see if you can repair a little bit of damage. I'm going to grab that bolt with what are called parallel jaw pliers. These pliers are a lot different than, say, a needle nose plier. If I grab that, it doesn't grip real well because it's only hitting it at one point. Even a pair of channel locks doesn't do a wonderful job and if I do it from the side I'm going to damage those threads or in the case of the brass tubing I'd probably crush it. These parallel jaw pliers the jaws stay parallel for the whole length. They're about an inch and a half maybe a little more than that long and if I grab that squeeze nice and hard it will hold real well. Now because I'm going to be making some sparks and throwing some dust I'm going to put a little bit of safety glasses over my regular glasses I'm going to fire up the Dremel and see if I can get this arranged so that you can see what I'm doing. Now those sparks may have looked like they were coming right at me, but they were really going over the, the side there. Once I'm done, I'm not going to pick that up with my fingers, but I'll grab 
I picked the bolt up now with the uh, the pliers still a little bit hot and used the Dremel to touch up the just the end of it where the uh, the cut was and then I can wind the nut back out and that cleans the threads up and we've got a nice short bolt with a nut that will go on and off uh, quite easily. Uh, if I wanted to cut a piece of uh, stainless steel piano wire again the parallel jaw pliers allow me to do that and the nice thing here is that these pliers will actually allow you to run the uh, the thing you're holding right through the pliers I can grab it leave just the part that I want to cut out turn on the Dremel cuts right through it the brass tubing it's even more important here to use these pliers because if I were to grab that with say the channel locks or something along those lines it would probably crush it this is going to give a nice tight grip I'll leave a little bit out the end no sparks that time with brass uh, plexiglass It'll cut right through. As I said, circuit board, I can easily put a notch in there. So when time comes to cut off something in the workshop, if you have a Dremel, uh, these wheels are an ideal way to do it. As I said, uh, you can get a pack of 100 from Amazon, I think, again, $15, $16. You need to get a, uh, a mandrel or an arbor, and I think you'll have a really good uh, cutting solution. One of the more challenging things that we're faced with when we're working on electronics projects, at least for me, is stripping wire. And you can use a pair of wire cutters and grab onto it, pull a couple of times, and half the time you strip it, half the time you might cut through it. And I've collected a number of different wire stripping devices over the years this little junky thing the one that I've settled on that I used most is this uh, I don't know if it has a particular name I got it on Amazon for less than twenty dollars but the thing that's beautiful about this is you can take different types of wire this is a piece of stranded oh, probably about 20 gauge and it strips it very very nicely doesn't damage the wire and it automatically adapts to different size wire. This is a piece of number 14 house wire. Put that in, pull on it, and it strips it. The thing that's remarkable is I can take a piece of rainbow ribbon wire. This is uh, one, two, three, four, five strand. I can put that in, and it'll strip all five at once. And then I just pull off the end of it, split those, solder them, do whatever I want. Uh, it's not the best in the world, but for my purposes, it works on all these different sizes of wire very nicely. Rarely do I have a problem. There's a piece of solid wire, probably about number 18, well, probably more like 20, 22. Works very, very well. Highly recommended.